we're going to call your attention to uh, the book of Romans, the first chapter, verse 8 and 9. Romans chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Deacon Murray, would you read for us? First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. Ella Jones just sang the song, It's Just Nice to Be Nice. We ought to be thankful for the relationship that we have one to another. God said in his word that he has given us an inheritance among those that are sanctified. So we have a special relationship, or we should have a special relationship one to another. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, sometimes we get the mistaken impression that to be friends or to, uh, 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 with a person that you have to agree with everything they say or do. That's not necessarily friendship. If I say something wrong or do something wrong and you refuse to correct me, just go along with me because of the relationship, you are not really my friend. You understand? You're not really. If you let me keep on walking and you know that there is a ditch and you don't say anything, you know, the mistakes I'm making or the errors I'm making and you refuse simply just to get along with me. You understand? So we have a special relationship. I'm saying this because I don't want us to get angry, get wind in our jaws when some of our friends, you know, point out our shortcomings. Amen? Amen. Because I believe it within, with all my heart when it's done in love, it is there as a safeguard in any relationship. Yes. It's a safeguard that sometimes, you know, we, we, we really don't know how to speak to people with regard to their shortcoming. Amen? Amen. So, uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, kind of hone up on our skills in that area because the Bible tells us speak the truth, but it tells us how to speak it. Speak the truth in love. Amen. All right. So uh, Paul here is saying, uh, first of all, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. That your faith, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. That is where our subject is coming from. And our subject tonight is, what are they saying about you? What are they saying about you? Read it. For God is my witness. For God is my witness. Whom I serve with my spirit. Who I serve with my spirit. And the gospel of his son. In the gospel of his son. That without ceasing. That without ceasing. I make mention of you always. I make mention of you always. In my prayers. In my prayers. You may be seated. What are they saying about you? That subject prompt this question. Would your neighbor, your co-worker, or your friend be surprised to find out you're a Christian? You, would they be surprised to know that you go to church? You would be amazed how many people live next door to people, meet people on their job, and never witness about what is going on in their lives with regard to their salvation. They'll tell you about the new car they bought. They'll tell you about the, the suit. They'll tell you about the shoes. They'll tell you about the purse. They'll tell you about where they went. But they, they are a little reticent 
to speak about Christ. So uh, 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 I wonder what they are saying about you. I, I read this story, and, and I believe it to be true because the, the person that, that wrote it wrote it as the truth of a person that was on their deathbed, on their deathbed, and the person that were visiting them was supposed to be their friend. And while he was on his deathbed, he began to converse with the person that says, now, you are a Christian. You go to church. I said, yes. Say, and uh, you read in the Bible concerning hell and its punishment. Yes. You believe any person that had not accepted Christ is doomed to go to hell and burn eternity. He said, yes. He said, well, you're not my friend. You did not tell me that. You understand what I'm saying? Sometime we've got to be the bearer of what we call bad news in order to get good results. We don't want people to be pushed out of shape with us by telling them they are wrong, they are false. But at some point in your relationship, we need to be up front and tell people, listen, you need to change what you are doing. Uh, you're going to bust hell wide open. Amen? Amen. It, we, we, at some point, have to get away from the popular gospel to the gospel that condemns. It's all right to make you feel good. You see, the doctor got some medicine. You, 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 you can be full of pain. The doctor got some medicine that'll knock it out and you won't feel a thing. You'll be just as happy as a felog. But just as soon as it wear off, he had not dealt with the cause. The pain returned. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes we come to church and the preacher, the teacher, the songs make us feel good for the moment. But when we leave church, we are still dealing with the same issues and problems. And we are responsible for dealing with the cause, not just the symptoms. Amen. So when you talk to your neighbor, to your friend, what what? What will they say about you? Will they say you warn them of the danger? Paul is speaking about the church at Rome. And isn't, isn't this a wonderful testimony about the church? So I thank my God for you all. That in other, and let me pray for everywhere I go, they're talking about your faith. You know, everywhere I go, all over the world, they are talking about your faith. And when I say faith, I'm not talking about just what you believe, but your lifestyle, your action, the way you live, folk are talking about it. You, isn't it wonderful to hear people say something like this? You know, it's a difference between this one and that one. It, it, don't it make you feel good to know that you are associated with this person? It's a difference between... That is what he means when he says your faith is spoken of. So what are people saying about you? What are they saying? Are they really enthused about the God that you serve? Are you so low key till they can take it or leave it? For a long time, I, I, I was upset and couldn't understand why in the world you're looking at TV, and you got a nice tone, you know, and all of a sudden it gets two or three, four or five decimals louder because the commercial comes on. Do you understand? It, they do that because they want to attract your attention. You might not be looking at what's on the TV program, but when, the, when that booming sound comes over, 
you, you feel like they, whatever's going on is, is exciting. We have to come to a place that we are excited about what we are in. Amen. It said like this, if you don't want it, what make you think I want it? Now we have the real thing. At least I have it. You say, well, you ought not to have to sell it. No, I don't have to sell it, but I do have to tell about it. You understand? Uh, I don't. I, I. I. I don't sell Lexus. I really don't. I, I'm not a Lexus salesman. But if somebody asks me about Lexus, I got a good report. You understand what I'm saying? I don't have sell Christ, but listen. When I talk about him, I got a good report, and I talk about him so strongly until somebody says, "Well, you know, I, when the, the next car I buy, you know, I think I'm gonna get me a Lexus." So when I talk about Christ, I want to talk about him with just as much enthusiasm. So when the person runs into a problem, a situation, he said, well, you know, I think Christ is the answer because I heard Tolliver talking about it. Lord, help me tonight. We've got to recognize who we are and whose we are. I am a child of the king. There should be a time that we speak boldly about what God is doing, what God can do, what God will do. Amen. You see, if you don't believe it, it's not going to happen. And if you believe it, you can speak it. This is Isaiah's admonition to the children of Israel. He says like this, what? Shake thyself. No, no, no. What did I say? Isaiah 52. I, I, I said 50. I thought I said 54, verse 2. Did I say 52? 54, verse 2. Verse 2. Wherefore, wait a minute, wait a minute. enlarge the place of the tent. I'm coming. Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtain. And let them stretch forth the the curtains, curtains of thine inhabitant of thine habitation, habitation. Spare not. now mm -hmm. slow down this admonition this encouragement was given before anything ever happened sure i can boast about having a hundred dollars after i get the check But how many of us are bold enough to stand up and say, listen, God is going to provide. I don't have it. I don't know where it's coming from. But I prayed and God assured me that this is going to be provided. This is what he, he, he is telling. Now, enlarge what? Enlarge the place, place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth, stretch forth the curtains of thine, the curtains habitation. Of thine inhabitation, where you live. Mm. Get, enlarge it, enlarge it. There is a prayer in the Bible that was famous a few weeks, a few months ago, a few years ago, but it's still in the Bible. It hadn't changed. It tell, when who, the Jabez prayed, said, do what? Enlarge. Now, if you are bold enough to ask God to enlarge your territory, you need to begin to walk into in that area of enlargement. Right. Amen. If you don't expect it, it's not going to happen. Spare not. Spare not. You, you, you see, you can't limit God. Spare, you know, we say, well, he might do this, but I don't know about that. If he can do this, he can do that. 
it's amazing how we, how we will pray for one thing, but we won't pray for the other thing. If he is a prayer answering God, and I know that he is, he will answer any prayer. I don't have to be selective what I ask for him as long as it's in the will of God. Read it. Spare not. Spare not. Lengthen thy cord. Lengthen your cord. And strengthen thy stake. Strengthen your stake. For thou shalt break forth on Here's the right hand. Here's what he said. Hand. Thou shalt break forth. On the right hand. And on the left. And on the left. Now, again, I want you to understand, this is before anything ever happened. You prepare before anything happened. Get ready to receive it before anything happened. Stretch forth your tent. Say so you're going to break forth on the right and on the left. In other words, God is going to supply your needs according to his riches in glory. Read it. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. And make the, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. And make the desolate cities to be inhabited. The places where, you know, you know I told you harvest. Mm. I told you harvest. All right. I, I can say that because God spoke it in my spirit. And I'm just... What, for want of a better term, and I don't mean I'm ignorant, but I'm just stupid enough to believe what God says. Now, I, and I say that because the world says you are stupid when you believe in God. Well, I guess I'm stupid because I believe God can do what he said he would do. And if that's the name you want to brand me with, well, I'm just a stupid Christian because I believe God answers prayer. I believe God heals bodies. I believe God opened doors. I believe God make ways. Now, if that make me stupid, I'm stupid. But I just know what God can do. So you just, you just name me, but I listen, that don't make, make what God says. He asked this question. What if some don't believe? Read it. Fear not. Fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed. Thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded. You won't even be confounded. That's, you know, you're the wonder, worried. You won't be ashamed and you won't be confounded. Read. For thou shalt not be put to shame. You shall not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. You're going to forget the shame of your youth. In other words, you don't have to bring all that baggage of what happened in the past. You're going to forget the shame of your youth. Sure, you made some mistakes in judgment. Maybe you did have to declare bankruptcy. But God says you're going to forget the shame of your youth. Those things that, that you were not up to snuff you're going to forget about those because God is going to step in and make up the difference. Read it. And shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Yes. For the maker is thine husband. For the maker is thine husband. The, the, the last clause talked about widowhood. You know, sometimes we get, well, bless him, overly concerned about not having a mate. And, you know, but he says now uh, he's going to take it. You shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood. Now, he didn't say it here that he's going to give you a husband. What did he say? Anymore. For? For the maker. Thy maker. Is thine husband. Is your husband. Mm -hmm. Already got it. Yes. And it didn't tell you who he is. What is it? For thy maker is thine husband. Yes. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Is his name. Is his name. Claim him, yes. Now, let me say this because we need to understand this. You say widowhood. Widowhood and thy maker is our husband. And we always talk about the women, but now me and you, you fit in here too. All right, Pastor. Amen. You, you know, we are we overly concerned sometimes about getting a mate. 
But the Bible says if you're single, you ought to be satisfied being single until God does something different in your life. Amen. See, sometimes we try to fix it. When uh, Brother Murr was growing up, they, you know, and, and the bicycle tire would go flat, they had the patch that you put on it. Now they have what they call a cold patch and a hot patch. You all don't know, but but one of them you 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 put you put the glue on 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 the, on the uh, tire, and you just put the patch on the cold patch. Now it'll hold for a while, but if you take this, the glue and you light it, and it burn and it get hot, then you put the patch on it. Then you have a lasting patch. Some of us put in a cold patch. <laughs> Where well, God want to put a hot patch. <laughs> in, other, in other words, we are settling. We are settling. When God has something better for us. Amen. Read. And, the, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall be, shall he be called. And the God of the whole earth shall he be called. That's a plenty. We, again, as I said, we have to recognize that our testimony, and when I said, uh, when, when I said testimony, I want us to clearly understand I'm not just talking about what we did just a few moments ago. Amen. That's not what I'm talking about. Your testimony is what the people see every day. That's really your testimony. Amen. Uh, because some of us got a good story. Amen. You don't see them at church for weeks. And they come in and you let them testify and you think that they've been in God's presence all the time. So that's not the testimony I'm talking about. I'm talking about those that have been walking upright in their neighborhood, on their job, in their home. Your testimony is important. People will believe if you live right before them. But you've got to live right before them. It's not what you say, it's what you live. Amen. Again, I say it's not what you say, it's what you live that influences people. And again, what are they, what were they saying? What are they saying about you? Are they saying in your community that you are a Christian? Do they believe in your Christian virtue, your Christian walk? Uh, are they, you know, they, well, I know they go to church, but uh, what I hear coming out at night, you know, I don't, I don't know about that, you know, you understand? But, and I'm going to close with this. They used to sing a song when, when I was a, a youngster in church. You've got to live the life you sing about in your song. You've got to do what the right and shun the wrong. Somebody help me out with that. Mother George. <laughs> I thought I saw Sister Coleman mouthing it. Amen. But really, the songs that they sang, the songs that they sang expressed what God expected. Actually, the songs that they sang meant to express what God expected. And, 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 and not just God, the church expected you to live the life that you sung about in your song. My testimony is this, that we had to live it to such a degree until if there were anything that the people in the community felt was untoward. And we were just kids in church. But if there was anything that they felt we were doing that did not meet the standards of our church, they reported you to the church.
you, 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 they report, they would call your church, your church, the pastor, the church mother. You usually with the church mother because the pastor lived out of town and says, little, little brother Tolliver was doing such and such. So that meant at that time I got to go back to the altar because I got caught. <laughs> But I, and, I, and, and I'm being, but listen, we should not wait until we get caught. I need to hurry up and say that. The simple fact that we got caught should not be what provoked our repentance, but it should be the love of God in our heart that makes us aware that what I have done, or what I've said, or how I have acted, bring reproach on the God that I love. That is what should promote repentance. Amen. So, again, I ask the question, what are they saying about you? What are they saying about you? And you say, well, I don't care what they say. I know, I know who I am. I know who I am, too. But I do care what people say about me. <laughs> 